Hello and welcome to Tights TV. Quite a bit to get through today. Uh, we'll touch, obviously, across the uh, game, what's been cancelled. Got Oxford as well. Is that going to get cancelled with weather and that? You don't know. But as always, I've got Ryan Beard at Tycon. Ryan, appreciate your hey, time out, mate. So just going back to the game on Saturday, mate, against Stevenage. We've just been talking about it off air. I think in this day and age, where you've got the technology, you can monitor weather, you can, everybody's got it on the apps and stuff like that. If, yeah. it, if, if the pitch is frozen night before, you're not going to have a global warming overnight. And when you look, like what we've been saying, it's like minus three, minus two overnight. It's not going to improve. So why not call it off day before for fans? A long journey, mate, isn't it? Exactly. Well, I think if you looked at a lot of the games, they were called off on the Friday night, weren't they? So some, mm -hmm. you know, that the, the, there are clubs that have taken the sensible approach, um, but for whatever reason, they didn't. They didn't do it. I know. I know. There's a lot of Stephen. His fans have been online saying it's, it's not us. It with the referee and all that kind of stuff. But they could have made the decision on Friday night. Yeah. Because you know, if you looked at the, I looked at the weather forecast and it said minus three in Stevenage on, on on Friday night. If it's if it's already frozen on Friday and it's minus three through night, and you looked at the temperatures throughout the day, hmm. um, you know, as it were going out, up, it, it were one, two, three, four degrees. It were never going to thaw out, hmm. it, 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 but, or, or at least it were never going to thaw out to an acceptable level. Um, obviously, Neil Collins has got a difference of opinion, so I mean, really and all, yeah. Wouldn't it? I mean, for, for, to, to leave it while quarter past one until they called it off. When 1400, you know, just short of 1400 Barnsley fans are either there or very nearly there, hmm. it's, it's really poor, mate. It's just no no regard for the fans at all um, and, and what it's cost them and the time and everything else that, you know, just it's just like, oh, well, it's kind of sodden, really. You know what I mean? That kind of attitude, isn't it? it it's it just no regard given for the fans. And as, as you've probably heard a million times before, the game's nothing without fans. Yeah. It's, we yeah. the we are, we are fans, it's Sunday League football. Hmm. Going for it, Ryan. And, and I mean, there's no regard for fans, and it's you know, at least I, I'm really pleased that Neil Collins came out and said how disappointed he was with the with the decision. He obviously thought that the pitch were playable. Then we've heard that Stevenage fans, that Stevenage had some players out with COVID, so mm -hmm. I know it's the ref that makes a decision. I don't want to be too conspiracy yeah, theorist, but it, on, on on the you know on the strength of that, it looks a bit dodgy. It looks a bit mm -hmm. dodgy, especially when you're saying it were more than playable. But I'm, I, I'll. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there's been no backhanders offered. <laughs> <laughs> alleged. Just, alleged. I mean, it's just a poor. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's a poor decision. And what were a big game for both clubs? What were a yeah. really big game for both clubs? It, it's disappointing that we've not got it on. Um, but it's like I think there just needs to be the EFL need to have a system in place for for things like this where. They need to give the fans as much notice as possible um, because you can't just expect fans just to just to spend a load of money and then get there and it be cancelled at last minute because it's not fair. It's not fair. We don't all earn football's wages. You know, well, just have a bit of consideration for, for for your fan base. Well, I've thought about this and I don't know what people will think about it in comments and about like people watching back. I don't know what you'll think about it, Ryan, but you get your non-league you know, you you non league clubs and fair enough, they haven't got only the guy to get back all day long and we call them off the night before. So could EFL make a going forward, could EFL make a change? And I think possibly we could do because each area have got like some kind of officials, some kind of referee in the in the district. Would it be would it be beneficial to football clubs to like, you know, such like Stevenage, you haven't got on the soil eating and it's not over right. Mm. Said night before, uh, a referee or a, an official go down to the ground, inspect pitch, or it's frozen, it's rock hard, blah, blah, blah. Look at the temperatures for that evening, that night. What's it going to be? Minus, minus, minus. Right, we'll call it off now, the evening. Yeah. It's not going to improve overnight. And then at least then you know, as fans, Saturday morning, oh, game's called off. Right. Yeah. Then you're not making a journey. Surely, it's. It, I won't say it's an easy solution, but it just seems so simple that... You've got officials in it, every every county, and it you know it don't let tech rocket science to come up and said, will it take a stud? <laughs> you know what I mean? You a bit thing. Will it take they, a stud? Can Sunday league. Yeah, they can always find out, mate. Where, who, who haven't got under soil eating? Who's not yeah. got it? So then, on, on, on occasions like this, where there's there's been freezing weather all week, by the way. So hmm. you know, I, I'm going out walking dog every day. Grass were frozen everywhere. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. It was frozen yeah. solid everywhere. So if you've not got um, 
if you've not got under soil eating, it's gonna there's gonna it's gonna be a, it's gonna be an issue, isn't it? Mm. And, you know, in fact, I mean, Stephen, as you can see, that they've tried to do everything they could, I suppose, with the tarpaul and everything else. But like you say, I've been I've been protocols in place for scenarios like this where the, there's teams that haven't got under soil eating so therefore and, and then looking at the weather is to get like local referee representatives to yeah. go around and check the pitch the day before as opposed to leaving it well match day because it's like you say when it's not going to change in the vast majority of cases is it it's not it's not going to happen then and and to be fair a lot of league one and league two games were called off were called off on the friday night which is which is good that's how it should that's how it should have been done <clears throat> um I mean, it got even worse. The fact that they did it eleven o'clock and then they did it again at quarter past one. I mean, I mean, come on, if it's if it's not if it weren't <laughs> if it weren't done at eleven o'clock, if it weren't ready at eleven, or in their opinion, it weren't ready at eleven o'clock. It weren't going to be ready at one o'clock either. It weren't getting any warmer, was it? In in those two hours, um, must have waited for the old current bunch to come out and just spotlight yeah, down. But, and say, but for yeah, for me, I mean, it might sound a bit controversial, but for me, I think it should be a prerequisite if if you're in EFL that you need to have under soil eating. Um, yeah, and and I, and I know that. Maybe it gives clubs one or two seasons grace when they get into EFL because I know there'll be teams that come up and drop back down and come back and drop back down. But you know, so if you give a if you give a team that's been in league two two seasons grace to get to get it done, um, and they remain in the league, you know, and and maybe for clubs that can't afford, if they can share their finances with the EFL, maybe some funding, part funding to mm. help them to help them get it done because. You know, we play a lot of matches through winter and, and we live in a cold country when it's in winter and you're going to have a lot of games where, you know, it's going to be frozen, eh? pictures are going to be frozen. And it's same for yeah. sort of drainage yeah. and stuff like that. I just think I just think it should be a prerequisite. They have certain standards, stadium standards. So for me, they should have certain pitch standards as well. Yeah, um, so and, and I know it's not as easy as that because it's not it's not going to be the cheapest thing in the world, but a lot of pictures, re- a lot but of clubs read the pictures as well, don't they? Yeah. So they could get it put in. Or maybe like you know, maybe maybe there could be some help or assistance from from the EFL Not funding, yeah. Not depending funding, on depending yeah. on finances of that particular club, uh, you know, I'm sure there'll be like a qualifying, you know, amount of money that they earn and things like that, and that, you know, for for a bit, bit like a benefits kind of a thing. But it, it, it'll benefit the league throughout to have it. Well, I know that we do we get we do stuff like uh, grassroots football and stuff like that EFL. That's what I mean. But what what about something like this then? Is that a club gets fined for going in administration. We've seen it. We've seen all these fines going about an X amount of pounds. What about put back to one pot, one side, and say, look, you know, there's a bit of a pot here. I won't say say here's all money, you know, for to get it because it'd be unfair for them teams what's already got it. But like, say here you go, try and distribute it out fairly, and say here's that for yeah. the maintenance here under highlighting or that's towards it, and and it's got to be done on that and prove it, and then that way you know it's gaining a counterpoint. It's not game squandered on like silly wages for players you know and I think that yeah I think it's a fair comment that we money should be gone into the club because it, like what you said we are the fans would be no club yeah. you know that's the life of the um, life of the, a lot of uh, football stadiums where the fans you know the community and stuff like that and that pot should be set aside it's like look this can't be squandered on wages it can't be squandered on like transfer fees or agents and this over this is towards the either help or upkeep for your unsoil eating, you know, it might be near the end of its life, or to put it towards what you need to get unsoil eating. And then that way, yeah. it's like, a, here you go, a prompt and a shove in that direction. So, yeah. get where you're coming from, yeah, that, right? Yeah, good sound. Uh, today, as well, it marks anniversary of uh, a former owner, Ryan, uh, yeah. Patrick Prime, uh, who sadly passed away. I mean, it was back. Way back in uh, 2003, when it, things were looking bad and bleak in the administration, really bleak, yeah. and who knows, yeah. who knows if it wouldn't have been for uh, Patrick stepping up to Mark, we might not be a bound football club, mate. So I, I, I think there's a strong, there's a, <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a strong case for the fact that we won't be here, mate. Or if we were here, we might have been a bury. You know what I mean? And do it, do it, doing yeah. what that did if it were if it were for Patrick, you know, is. He's, he, he was a great man. He was a great man. He, he, he did. He did save us. You know, he absolutely did save us. And 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 I think, um, with all due respect to, to the to the current owners, um, and having back tomorrow, I think there were grumblings at the time when he were in. But yeah, I think Patrick always did the best for the club. What he thought were the best for the club. You know, and if you look at the teams we had back then and the players yeah. that we had back then, we I mean players used to moan, then I'd give me a right arm to have a squad like that now. <laughs> With some of the yeah. players that we had under under Patrick, some of the players that we had. Um, 
and he did what he did for the football club out of love for the football club, not out, not not there for financial gain. Hmm. He did what he did because he was a Barnsley man. He was a very successful Barnsley man, and he, he he put his money into his local club to save us. And you know, and I don't think that could ever be forgotten by any Barnsley fan at any point. He, you know what he did was were unbelievable, and I don't I don't think it can be understated how important he is to you know the the the, the history of Barnsley Football Club and the and the future of the future of the club because he gave us a future, didn't he? Yeah. He gave us a future. So, yeah, it's uh, marking the passing the day, you know, the day of the passing of a, of a great man. Great in man. my opinion. Um, I know there's like a, a, a plaque on wall and another with a flag with what's game repaired with one made as one saved as uh, uh, Reverend Preedy. Would you, I mean, this is one, I mean, could people get involved with council and stuff like that? They did it for Casper. Would a statue at club? Be, be worthy, do you think? Because I think personally it would, because you save a club. Me personally, yeah, I think, I think you know if you see we see them flags around all play one made as one saved us. So why not have a, why not have a, a joint statue of a Reverend uh, um, Reverend uh, Preedy and, hmm. and 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 Patrick? Why not? Yeah, you know, I mean, every foot there's loads of football clubs have have, have statues outside the clubs. Hmm. You know, and I think we, we've had so many yeah. great players at his clubs over the years, but no one's more important than than, than those two guys. One, yeah, three you know, uh, yeah. So it's why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. I, I'd, I'd I'd certainly support it, man. I'd certainly support it. Yeah, I think a lot would. I I would. Um, I say it's a you know it's a statue. You see it at other clubs and grounds, and like you yeah. say, two very key uh, people as far as I'm concerned. What's uh, been involved in Barnes Football Club, like you're saying, one made us and one saved us. You yeah, can't get more important than that, can you? Really, I suppose. Yeah, I saw one at Peterborough. Mate. We went to Peterborough, uh, and they've got a statue outside. I, yeah, I'm, I'm terrible with names. I can't remember the name, but it was name of, of an owner. But he'd, he'd been a player, a captain, and then he'd been chairman, an owner of, of, of the football club. Mm. And they've got a statue of him outside the great. And I think what a great, you know, what a great thing to have outside a great memory to have of, of someone that was such a, an influential, important figure at their club. Yeah. Peter uh, that, that weren't a player, I think it's you know why can't we do something? Why can't we do something similar? Yeah. Uh, before we get to Oxford game, rumblings going about that time of year, and it was in January for players coming and going and this and other. Yeah. Dallas is coming back uh, from his loan spell in Scotland. Rumours are that you know, well, is either if he if he goes out on loan or is he going to stop at club? If he stays at club. That's fine. If he goes out on loan, it'd have to be like to a non-league, you know. It will have to be non-league, league. won't it? Because he's played for two league teams, hasn't he? Yeah. So far this season, um, we we Manic and Barnsley. But looking at what uh, Bobby said on his on the uh, on the write up on the on the website, he did say they're getting him ready for a return next summer. So it would it would seem mm. that he's going to be going out on loan. Mm. From what Bobby said on there. Um, I don't know. I think a lot of fans might, have, which is understandable. You can read into oh, Dallas has come back, then Cole must be going. <laughs> yeah, not, not, it's, that in, but yeah, it, you know, so. there's that, but it's not quite the same. We're not going to let us talk, you know. And, and, and I think Andy Dallas is going to be a good player for us. I, I was really pleased when we signed him because there were a lot of clubs yeah. after him, mm. and I don't think he were given a chance to get going at all under uh, 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 before before he went out on loan. Mm. Um, so I, I do feel for that, and I think he will. I think he will be really good for us. Um, yeah. Because if yeah. you look at his video, I know it was non league, but if you look at his videos, mate, he knows where onion bag is, that lad. It's just he's got a full bad, repertoire yeah. of, of, of finishing abilities. So, um, I personally, I'd like to see him back in squad, if I'm being mm. honest. I think mm. it'll freshen up the it'll freshen up the attack. Um, I think it'd be great to have him as, a, as, a, as an option on bench. But, you know, if Bobby's got different ideas for him to go out on loan, then, it, like I said, it'll have to be, it'd have to be non league, wouldn't it? It'd have to be yeah. non league. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to fall in back track. We were going to get fined. We think, but no. I think we'll, I think we'll Bobby be here. He won't go through, though, would he? Won't go through paperwork, won't go through, would he? No, it? no, uh, that'd be interesting. So, yeah, Styles rumoured again to be going. Um, two million pound release clause again. It's a bit of a man. I might have seen different polls out in here saying, uh, <laughs> you let him go and I'll keep him. And it's over personally. If an offer came in for him and he wants to go, you know, styles go kind of thing. Yeah, um, that's 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 where I'm at with it, Neil. I, I'll be honest, I, I was really I was really excited when he stayed with us at begin, when he when he come back to the club at the beginning of the season. You know, Neil Collins was saying how professionally being in training 
he'd not he'd not been sulking. He got his head down, and, and he seemed to put in a couple of appearance a uh, uh, good outings early on in the season. And I thought, hey, you know, if if we can keep Styles it for, for, for at least half a season, then that's going to be great. But it just mm. hadn't, it hadn't transpired since then, has it? He hasn't no. he hasn't been at his best. You know, I think his best performances at, at Barnsley were under Big Val when we got you know we got the playoff season in Championship during COVID. Mm-hmm. He were possibly his best player. One of certainly one of his best players that season. I thought he was amazing. He scored some cracking goals. He was just a very different player to the one that we're seeing now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Millwall. Yeah, he went on loan at Millwall, but they didn't come back in and buy him, or, or at least they didn't see the value in spending the two and a half mil, two mil, whatever it is, the release clause. So that 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 says a lot, really. If I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. And then for the majority of this season, he's just been. I won't go as far to say that he's been rubbish, but he's not been. He's been all right. He's been average. He's been he's a squad glimpses. member. Yeah, he's been okay. And at the minute, I might I might be reading into it wrong, uh, but his body language don't look great. He don't, he don't look like he's bothered mate to be here. So for me, if right offer comes in, I think it might be better for both parties for for Callum to move on and start afresh, and Barnsley to to. You know, free up some free up some money on wages and free up some and, and get some tra- transfer brassing for him. Be that you know a bit less than the release clause or not. I think it might be best for both parties. Myself. Yeah, yeah. It comes to a point when you know it time's probably run its edge, and I think it, I, I agree with that what you said. There, I think under Valley got uh, Callum Britton and Styles playing proper that wins he and and that. Like I said, he went out to Millwall and he come back. In pre-season, I mean, we, we saw him. I think it was against yeah. Crew at pre-season. At home. I thought, what a player is comfortably kind of best player on pitch, yeah. weren't he? Comfortably and best ben player on pitch that game. That has been it's a miss kind of thing. So again, maybe that it's time for a change for lad. Uh, and again, I don't, I don't wish any old feeling out like that. But sometimes a player might need it, might need a, a different challenge. Um, yeah, you know, it might boil down to that. Uh, I think he's run uh, his course, Neil. <laughs> he's run yeah. his course, and it's time to move on. Yeah. So, I mean, he's been linked with Old City. I think every player's been linked with Old City at the minute from us. Uh, <laughs> Devante Cole, and but we were interested to see here Liam Senior on uh, Sky over day saying, "Oh no, there's no truth in this." So again, yeah, uh, like a commentary situation. This at one bit, wouldn't it? We've after everybody. Yeah. Um, so yeah, against Oxford game, mate. Um, their game were also cancelled at the weekend. Keep yeah. an eye on weather and that. All been well up to now. It's on. But with storms and that, what's knocking about with wind and uh, bucket loads of rain coming down, I'm hoping that it's still going on for the sake of our fans, what's going to make the, the journey as well. Uh, as well. Yeah. Six-pointer, mate, isn't it, this one? Six-pointer. Oh, definitely. Cause we're, on, we're level on points, aren't we? We're just we're above mm-hmm. on goal difference, aren't we, a minute? Above, yeah. above Oxford. I think that puts us... Um, uh, Stephen is playing tonight. Or oh, tomorrow night, sorry. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, maybe tomorrow, yeah. yeah. I'm going to say, Mike, because I think it could potentially put us, you know, six points clear to Stephen if they're not playing. Um, mm. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's an important game. Mate. It's just it's just to solidify his place in there. And obviously, Bolton got beat at the weekend by Leighton Orient. Uh, yeah, we know we're a good really side. Nice you know, right, yeah. Leighton Orient is a very difficult side to beat. So, yeah. Bolton have found it tough there. Um, so... It's a good chance to claw some points back on Bolton, especially with them having uh, a game in hand on us. Mm. Um, they're gonna, it's gonna end up with two games in hand, but unless Bolton are playing tomorrow night as well, I, I haven't seen schedule to be fair, but um, it gives a chance to claw some points back on those guys, doesn't it? Yeah, so definitely. It, uh, and definitely solidify, you know, some more points in the in the playoff positions. I wouldn't say, would you make any changes like, but <laughs> been that um, long like now, nah, I don't know who's playing. Uh, McCart, yeah, I'm, I'm, hoping that, I'm hoping that Je- I'm hoping Jamie McCart's back, mate. Um, mm. He's still got his calf injury on here, so maybe not. Um, but we'll see. Um, he did say though it worked that bad, didn't he, Collins? I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping he's back. Um, I play Cad or not left, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I definitely play Cad not left. He looked when he, he came on completely different prospect to um, to to Callum Styles after when he come on in that second half. Yeah, because yeah, some, sometimes, like, like I said, sometimes he gives ball away, but he's always trying to make some out on his nick here. You know what I mean? He's always yeah. trying to get around back of him. He's always trying to put a cross in. He's got a decent ping on him. He's got he's got a decent strike on him. So I think definitely put put Nick Cannon in there, not left. Mm. Um, and it depends whether Lucas fit or not, doesn't it? Really, still plays in midfield. 
Yeah, um, hopefully he's all right. Because yeah, it's been a week now, hasn't it? It'll be a week so since he's mm. played. So hopefully he's hopefully he's all right. Score prediction, Ben. I'm, I'm with you, by the way. I, I, we we Karen, I did him in at left back because, when, like you said, when he came on the second day, he, he offered us a different dimension down there. Uh, so I've seen some people like saying Barry Cotter starting from Toro Keith for what he did. But again, it's one of them kind of plays Cotter. Could he do it? Could he keep consistent? It's one of the mid and misses, isn't it? Uh, but... Yeah, I think I think okay. Uh, sorry, I think Carter's better off coming against tired legs, mate. I think it's just his pace and he's, and he's got a different different. I think personally, I think Corey O'Keefe's a better player overall, um, and he's got a lot more league experience, uh, you know. And I think you can see that um, his his last couple of games, Corey's not been as great, even though he got a great goal against Bristol. He's not he's not his overall performance, but. I think throughout the season, I I, I rate me Corey O'Keefe. I think he's I think he's a good player, so I I, yeah. I, I won't put Barry Cotter in front of him, but mm. I would utilize Barry Cotter in the game, mm. you know, as a substitution because he, he is he is he can he can be poor, <laughs> he can be poor, but, but no also way. when he's on it, he's a live wire, he's a live yeah. wire. And he likes he's got that missile light throw, so I I, I think yeah. he's better coming on as a sub. I think he's an impact player himself. Uh, so I'll, I'll get to it now, then. Uh, score prediction, mate. Oh, Christ, it's going to be time, mate. But to... Bob, Bob, uh, Oxford have lost a couple of key players during the window, so they lost the keeper and they lost one of the I can't think, I think it was the strikers that might be one of the wingers that had, that had scored quite a few that had to because they were on loan, so they had to go back. Um, they've got that young keeper in from, from Chelsea on loan, yeah. um, who looked to have a decent performance last time. I made I, I seen highlights, mate, he made some cracking saves, so. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tight, pal. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to be really boring and say 2-1. But it could. I, I, I don't think a draw would be a bad result. I'm not saying we should mm. play for a draw, but I don't think a draw will be the worst result in the world. Yeah. I want to say 2-1 as well. Uh, I'd just, I, there's goals at back. We know that. It'd be nice to have a clean sheet. I say, I say every week, but it's like, it'd be nice to have a clean sheet. But a 2-1, it, it will be tight against Oxford. Uh, Certainly. I thought when Liam Manning was here, I thought we were a different opposition. Yeah. But now, obviously, he's doing his, uh, cutting his teeth at Bristol City, Liam Manning. Yeah. Oxford seemed to be like just falling away a bit. Uh, and I know they're just in playoffs by goal difference wheels like they're in six. But they were in top two think, for a long time now. So. Yeah, but what? <laughs> and the, I think it just like started to have a bit of an indifferent patch. And I'm hoping we can take advantage of that. Uh, like I say, I think. Changes what need to be made, what we've what, what we've said. I'm going two one. It's going to be a tricky. It, it always a tricky ground, uh, Oxford boy. You never know how it's going to go uh, at Oxford. Yeah. And people see Oxford and think, oh yeah, but not really much of a, a club. But when when you see how it's run, and you know, because I've had rumblings as well, Ox, uh, Oxford fans at uh, bit situations at their at their ground yeah, as well. Um, They've got the issue with the stadium, haven't they? They've got the issue with the stadium. They're mm -hmm. going to have to be out of that stadium in in three or four seasons, and they're, they're still trying to find a new place and all this sort of stuff and get planning permission and all that done. So that's it's quite a lot to to to, to deal with. Um, you know, I'd I'd be I'd be you know nervous if I were if that were my football club. So I thought yeah. they've got all that going on in the background, but it's yeah, it's a, it's a strange one. I don't know if you ever been to Casham. It's a, it's a funny stadium. I went to it last yeah. year. It's a funny it's a funny old stadium. Um, yeah. It's all right, you know what I mean? It's not it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not a dive or anything. It's not. It's just. It's. Mm. It's three sided. It looks unfinished. Yeah. It looks like it's just like it is, which is just plonked in the middle of an industrial estate. Mm. Um, which I suppose like a lot of these new London stadiums are. But um, mm. um, issues. I think, I, think as well. I think it'll be a lot better for Oxford when 